Welcome back, Zero K fans, to the final round and fi possibly final match, certainly the match for first place, of this January 2018 2 2 tournament. We are just about to get this started, and it is going to be Google Frog and, and 400 against Black Duchy and Kshatriya on Alien Desert. I should have put down first, but I'm getting a bit tired, apparently. I'm forgetting to put down my little bottom bits. So we've had one time where I lost audio, and one time where I forgot to put the bit at the bottom. We haven't yet had a time where I've forgotten to show the game. So, hey, two for three. I'm actually doing, or at least one for three, I'm actually doing pretty good avoiding my usual technical problems. Oh, I mean, granted, that's kind of a bad thing to say. This is like, yeah, my usual technical problems, but I, and they are kind of. Well, at any rate, we have, like I said, just this final match. So Alien Desert and map, very in favor of vehicles. I'm guessing Google Frog is going to go for Hover, but honestly, I'm not sure. We will see at least one Rover Factory, possibly a Tank Factory, which we have not seen this entire tournament, and I'd love to see it. But it would be interesting. What I do want to see, though, is... Actually, I do want to see Tanks. That's exactly what I want to see. I want to see people go for tanks. I want to see what happens when players take advantage of the fact that it is a flat map. But on the other hand, we have seen before the Google Frog 400 like to go for any kind of drop ship based strategy. At any rate, we have uh, we have a gunship plant coming out. Oh, from Kshatria. No, from Black Duchy. Jump bot hovercraft, sorry, jump bot gunship from Black Touching Shatria Southwest. I don't know what we're going to see then. Rover's coming in from 400. But what else? What is Google Frog going to be up to? If you have rovers, I mean, you could go for Ravager Drop, but we're not going to see tanks then. Not likely, anyway. And especially with this weird jump bot gunship setup, for given the players, I mean, that's not surprising. It's just that it's really. That's not what I expected. So 400 going for something more typical. Google Frog, no indication of what they're planning on going for. There is some indication that they exist, but nothing indicating what they're thinking. And, yeah, there we go. Google Frog doesn't even have anything built yet. I think they're going to try to build something a little over to the northwest side. So we'll see that as it starts out with, again, the rovers coming in from 400. Google Frog apparently just going for economy first. They have a factory, so they have production. It's not like they need to have two off the bat. Well, Black Duchy going in for Comnap. They're getting a Hercules going in for the Comnap. They want to kill off at least one of the commanders. This is, of course, 2v2. Not the worst thing in the world, but now we have a Tank Factory. Yay! We've got Tank Factory! Awesome! So we have tanks and rovers coming in from the southwest side. We got tanks, finally. We've had spiders a lot of this time, so at least one of my favorite factories is being represented. But now we have tanks. Kodachi's coming in from... Southwest. Actually, this is the first time we've seen the new tank model on stream. Now, on the other hand... Oh, what are we doing? We are doing a jack drop! Okay, that makes sense. You would need the Hercules for that. And that, given what's there... Well, I could see it working. It might be a bit tricky, though, just because it is going to fly over everything. It is going to be spotted. But, that being said, it's possibly going to work, especially if they turn that into a com nav. Like, drop the, drop the jack... Pick up Google Fox Commander, haul it away, and then it can't do anything. At the same time, there's just the one welder, which that's something, but it's not much. They pull that off, they could make this work, and no, instead they're going for 400 Commander, which is an established base, actually. There's a Lotus and everything, and I'm not sure what the plan is on that front, and indeed, the Hercules is not going to be able to get anything off this. The Jack forced to be dropped thanks to a dro falling Hercules. The Jack doing what it can, but I don't see what it has on hand. I mean, it's a melee unit. That can jump. Okay, that's something. And at least Nat's coming in here from Black Touching to provide a bit of support. So there is room to kill 400's commander. And indeed, that's exactly what's going to happen. Right off the bat, 400 losing their commander. That is another 4 metal per second down. They haven't lost much else, but the fence are going down as well. And the Jack's still healthy and alive. Gets rid of the Lotus. Could get rid of the Scorcher coming out of the factory. Not even allowing any damage to be dealt. But the Kodachi's coming around from Google Frog will finish the job as the Jack burns to death. Able to get rid of a commander, though. That is still value. Although... Mostly in terms of attrition. 
Like, it's still value, but at the same time, that was their entire play. And Black Touching going for an expansion, but they have no workers, and darts are coming in, soon followed by the Kodachis and the fencers that were already being built. The Kodachis are a real concern, because they're going to get rid of the metal extractors without too many issues. They can just hit and run the metal extractors. Kshatra, I'm not sure what they're going to be upgrading into, but whatever they upgrade into, that hopefully is something for them that can deal with the Kodachis. That is their biggest concern. Right now, Northeast is roughly at parity with Southwest. How this assault with the, with the Kodachis goes depends on a lot of things, and indeed the moderator is already in place. Very well played by Kshatra to hold that. At this point, however, the Southwest side is expanding rapidly. Google Frog is taking territory. They didn't lose a whole lot in their base, and there's a lot more in their possession than anything coming out from the Northeast side. On top of the fact that the Kodachis are still coming in. The moderators are not here. The Kodachi does get a free metal extractor. Might be able to get a second one as well as Black Touch's commander is forced to retreat, and indeed that is exactly what's going to happen. So while Southwest doesn't have quite the same economic base, at least in terms of a combination of reclaim and overall damage, they do now. They certainly do now. They've made that the case. So at this point, Black Touchy, Black Touchy is pretty on point with their approach right now. They do have the counter for Kodachi, which I mean, we're seeing Panthers come in as well. But Panthers, again, they're they're not going to last. These things deal 800 damage a pop. Or sorry, 500 damage a pop. They will last, never mind. They will not be two-shotted. They will be three-shotted, not two-shotted. And there's enough other units coming with with the Harpies... We could still see this potentially go the way of the Northeast team. They're still on economic parity. They still have a 200 medal advantage in terms of attrition. So it's not over yet. But it is certainly a little bit risky. It's tricky. They can rebuild. They can get these metal extractors back up. They've gotten rid of most of the assault forces coming in. So at this point, it's actually fairly open. The problem, of course, is going to be positioning. And whether Radar is able to save them. Because right now, yeah, there's some knowledge of where the where these blitzes are. But the question is whether that's actually going to translate into the Blitzes dying, because you need three moderators to kill off a Blitz without any issue. Which they don't have. They have two. However, there is a third round back, and there is the Harpy coming in, so it's still something to get rid of basically everything coming forward. But yeah, more moderators are going to be necessary, and they are being built. So that's good. That's exactly what Kshatriya needs to hold this front line. And overall, the teams are even. In terms of actual choice of units, I'm I'm actually fairly confident in Northeast because the Crasher is coming in, yes, but there's not a whole lot Black Dutchies building. They have a couple of Harveys, they have a few Nats, but the main bulk of the force, the main thing that the Southwest team is going to have to power through is these Moderators. Now that there are four of them, the Ravagers are going to get one shot. And with any support, it might even be better than that. But yeah, these Ravagers aren't going to have much of a chance. Blitzes can no longer get in. And yeah, the crash is a bit of a pain, but it can only do so much. In large numbers, it can do a lot, but it's not in large numbers yet. This could still work out. Kshatra and Black Touch could still take the territory. The only downside for them right now is how quickly they can move around the map. Like, their main assault force is agonizingly slow, especially compared to the Blitzes, which live up to their name and being very quick. Also live up to their name and being lightning, because that is actually what the word Blitz means. But even with the crash, like, it's that crasher means that they are not building as many ground forces which means that the moderator is going to have a better shot at this. Of course, the downside is whether the moderators can survive this. If they can survive this assault, which is unlikely given that they were fired right as they fired, they're on cooldown, and that is going to be enough, or rather on reload. Cast too much battle right, apparently. On reload is going to be enough. That puts Kshatri's commander far too far out of position. The Blissas are able to get in. A few of them do die, but it's not enough. Kshatri will lose their commander. A couple of Ravagers will go down in the process, but still, that's at the cost of a commander. That undoes everything that happened in the early game. And Southwest, with a massive economic advantage as a result of that, and Northeast with a massive mobility... Sorry, Southeast... No, Northeast, that's right. With a massive mobility disadvantage, Black Duchy attempting to correct that with a rover assembly of their own. But I really would have liked to have seen that a minute prior. I get why they're building the gunships, but having the rovers up would have been a great transition to defend Kshatra, get them out of moderator reliance, and that would have allowed for better, a better position. But overall, that was still... It's still not dead yet. And this this Blitz could still be torn to pieces. Third Moderator will come in and finish it off. So, hey, some value is still being found. Goofrog's Commander also out in the open. Only a few Moderator shots will kill it, and the first one slows it down to the point that it can't get away. <clears throat> of course, it doesn't slow down its build rate, but it 
you know, still something. Still, though, Google Proxy Commander is saved thanks to digging. But the economy? That's the bigger thats the bigger story. Really, the economy for the Southwest is the real reason why they're going to be able to take this game unless something changes. I like how Northeast has set up defensive positions in the, in the front line. It is making it so that Southwest can't easily assault, but Southwest is getting money. They're accessing right now, but they're getting money. They're going to be getting more masons, going to be building up, getting more welders as well, using that to build up as well, using that to help push the factory. But otherwise, it's not enough. Oh, sorry, it is enough. It's not enough for Northeast just to rely on that. But if Southwest doesn't build up, then it actually will be enough because that will mean Southwest, their economic advantage is of no use. It turns an uh, advantage into or to excess, which means it's not a production advantage, which means it's not a military advantage, which means it's not a win. Allowing for these scorches to get around the south side of the map, allowing for the mod raiders to still be able to deal a fair bit of damage to the darts, even though I like to use the darts here, because it's just pushing the mod raiders onto reload, forcing them to waste their shots, which admittedly, hold fire would help, but then again, the darts would just come in. So without the moderators in play, that opens up doors. The Southwest team now has opportunities to assault this. However, that's also considering that, that's also not considering the fact that there are still units coming in. There's still Scorches coming in, some Harpies. There's only the one Crasher. Pyro's as well for additional raiding. Although Pyro against Blitz is a win for a Pyro. In sorry, win for a Blitz, not Pyro. What am I saying? Blitz beats Pyro. Blitz just about hard counters Pyro. And clearly Kshatriya knows it and is getting away. Good job, you. But that being said, this is where things are going to fall apart. Southwest, they've got everything they need. They have an economic advantage. They use that for production well enough. The darts, and they might be able to be taken out, but the pyro will take them down. So that's at least slowing things down a bit. But unless more harassment is able to come in and be successful, and maybe it will, this pyro is potentially being that harass. We're not going to see a whole lot fall apart. And the thing is... It's a question of what's going to happen after this, because economic advantage only becomes production advantage. It doesn't become a win. So if you destroy your opponent's economy, it doesn't mean you're going to win. It does mean that if you manage to destroy their economy and break their military, you will have an advantage. But that's exactly what's happened here. We have seen the Northeast team break the economy. They're, they are breaking the military on top of that. So what's going to come down to is the rebuild rate. And considering that there's more units now for the Northeast side than the Southwest side, that rebuild rate isn't necessarily going to matter as the northeast also has the economic advantage the ripper is the only real saving grace because of course that will get rid of the scorchers should they engage but why would they engage why would they ever engage the pyro is also taking a smart engagement smart ish engagement against the lotus two pyros against the lotus is a win for the pyros but there is the weaver the, the weaver the welder there the welder can defend itself but it's not enough and that will go down and that's a huge blow to the north side of the map that leaves the entire north side open to the northwest so yeah the northeast team kshatri can take that no problem. Or Black Duchy, actually. Black Duchy is more likely because they do have mace, or they will have maces, potentially. Oh, never mind. They have wasps. Even better. So at this point, everything's just turning up. Northeast team. Got rid of one of the Blitzes. They're tearing apart expansion after expansion. I mean, Southwest got a little confident that they had the mobility advantage and started building a lot of naked expansions, and that's turned into a lot of dead naked expansions because that mobility advantage got completely undone by Black Duchy Rover Assembly Switch. That was... Very smart on their part. That's going to open up everything. If they get rid of some of these razors, which I'm not sure why they're targeting exactly because of all the armor they have, but especially not targeting close up. Like, come on, get close. Get the Scorcher damage advantage before the Rippers and Blitzes come in. This is too late. Nope, this is too late. Very nearly got it. Still might be able to damage the Blitz a fair bit, but the important thing is getting the metal extractors. The important thing is the Northeast team now has a one and a half times metal advantage, has a solid mobile army, so is able to take care of whatever is built up. And as long as they can maintain their current position, they are in a strong position to maintain. However, the Rippers are a strong choice. That is the thing that is the unit advantage or unit type advantage coming in here from the southwest side could still turn it around despite the economic advantage. The economic advantage is not so stark that good unit choice, good counterpicking isn't going to win the match. We're not at the point where it doesn't matter yet. However, we are at the point where a good power in the back of the base can still deal some damage. Not enough to stop a Ripper from dealing with it, but enough to put some pressure. Didn't manage to get rid of the Masons, though. If that was done, that would have been huge. But even then, at this point, I'm not sure how huge it would have been. There's 30, 4, 35 build power, no, 37 and a half build power, being put into a 20, 20 metal economy. So unless Southwest gets a bunch of reclaim, they're not going to be able to get a lot of mileage. So as it stands, the Southwest is still behind. But not by much. Like I said, Northeast is a question of unit types. It's a question of 
what kind of armies they can use to attack. Those mod raiders are going to be very useful against the rippers should they engage. But I'm not sure if they're, that's going to be allowed. If Google Frog and 400 are going to let those rippers get engaged by the mod raiders instead of being engaged by the slashers or scorchers. But it doesn't matter. The scorchers, they have the numbers. They get hit once. They can move in. And granted, they don't they don't heal themselves, but they can move back. They can get repaired. The wasp is there. The commander's there. So at this point, Northeast, they've been turning what looked like a quick early game loss into a fairly strong win. Combination of reclaim and solid economy and also just using the moderators to hold back initial assaults, allowing them to push hard. And now that hard push is potentially turning into a win. The blitzes are going to be a bit of an issue. But there's, well, there's a few crashes. Okay, that's going to stop the locusts from doing much damage. But then again, the locusts, they don't care about attacking the main army. That's not their point. That's what harpies are for. Locusts go to the back line and rip apart the economy from behind. They eat your fields. That's probably why they're renamed Locust, because, yeah, they operate the same way. They destroy your entire economic base, leave you in famine, and then a revolt comes and destroys your society. I mean, it's not quite the same way in this game, because there's no concept of revolution on robots' part, apparently. Despite what science fiction would have you believe. But it still works. The Masons are down, and Southwest having gotten their economy roughly back on track, that is great timing. Because that means the production can't line up with the economy, which means that despite the fact that Northeast, they've, they're still at an advantage, but not as stark one, despite the fact that Northeast has lost their stark advantage, they still have a production advantage thanks to getting rid of those Masons. Well-timed on, on Black Duchy's part there. Of course, the center is still a very strong firebase. The amount of lotuses there is not something that can easily be taken care of. We might see something come in later, either a large heavy army to take the losses, or some artillery, a firewalker coming in there, just burning it all down. That seems likely. I mean, people switch to jump off a firewalker. I'm a bit surprised Kshatra hasn't bothered to build one yet. Actually, I'm, I am surprised Kshatra hasn't bothered to build one yet. Wait, why aren't you building a firewalker? Come on, that's, that's a very strong unit to have in this situation. All these static defenses, loads of somewhat mobile but not super mobile units, They got a great situation to throw a Firewalker in and just wreck everything. But even without the Firewalker, we're seeing the moderators just walk up. They just roll up to the base. Everything rolling up to the base. At this point, 400 doesn't have a whole lot to defend with. They have a lot built up on the northern side, and they have a relatively spread out economy. But the main thing is you have the firebase here, which isn't going to help much. And you have the main base being heavily assaulted. One of the Blitz is managing to get a bit of damage and stopping some of the moderators. And the darts, of course, doing their job. Scorchers and Pyros, more importantly, not up north. Not saving the moderators, which would have been a huge difference. That could have kept the powers alive here. They're still managing to get a fair bit of mileage off of getting rid of the, the storage, but that's not enough. Like, if we had the powers go north, stop all of these darts from coming in here, that would have kept the moderators alive, allowing them to kill off the blitzes, allowing the powers to continue to survive the rest of the match. But even then, that was still a very successful attack. Still managed to get some metal extractors down, gave some reclaim, which isn't the most successful aspect of it. That's actually... You know what, I take that back. That was kind of even. That was an even trade. That was not an advantage. However, the big, big group of lotuses here trying to get attacked by the by wolverines, which, again, I don't agree with. Like, seriously. You have the best artillery piece in the game available to you without a factory switch. Why aren't you building it? Not to mention these pyros would be able to come in here and help too, but the moderators are they're doing a fine enough job. Get the reload in, get the pyros in. There we go. Kshatriya knows what they're doing. Get those powers in and destroy the Lotuses. That's the entire north side down. South side getting heavily attacked, but again, the Blitz is coming in to support the Lotuses. So this south side firebase is essentially impenetrable, short of a Firewalker or possibly a fax switch into basically anything else. Maybe Black Dutch could go for Black Dawn. Maybe get something out of that too. But yeah, that's the thing. This, this area here, it almost doesn't matter. It looks like, for the most part, we're seeing the northeast side try to avoid it. But the thing is, the southwest side does have a through line from their main base up to that fire base, and they can use that as a staging point for basically anywhere else on the map. So unless the center base can be destroyed, southwest is going to be a threat. They're going to be able to secure in the north. They're going to be able to maintain the map control that they have. These pyros are doing a fair bit of damage, but that's not going to be permanent unless the center fire base gets destroyed. And with Google Frog's commander being pressured back, this could indeed happen. This is actually very possible, considering that there's, I mean, there's a lot of damage coming in, and really, I can see a Firewalker coming in on top of the on top of the Wolverines. That would cause the Gauss Cannon to still be exposed, but that would also allow for all the damage to the Gauss Cannon to be dealt. It wouldn't have its armor, because it is exposed. At this point, though, the Blitzes are coming in. The Moderators 
Some of them are in place to stop the Blitzes. Some of them are not. Actually, quite a few of them are up north and completely out of position to deal with the Blitz Assault. Uh, the Blitz Counterattack is not going to be of any use. And the Pyros are also out of position to deal with the Darts, which means that the Scorchers have to come in to save their team, but that's fine. The Scorchers are in position. That does push the Darts back. That does let the Moderators live to fight another day. And that also distracts a little bit from the Assault building up in the south. But again, that Assault... Not a huge assault, mostly taking advantage of the fact that, for the most part, the Southwest team wants that center. They want it dead. And they're actually managing it. Sooner or later, just having to have enough Wolverines, the Lotuses cannot deal with the claws being thrown in. Or actually, they're not Wolverines anymore. They're Badgers. Enough Badgers that they can't deal with the claws, and they can't deal with all this stuff coming in, and that's... That's enough. That is enough to stop this. Actually, are they called Claw Mines? I don't know if I'm going to be able to find out. I think they're still called Claws. They are indeed called Claws. Okay, good. That was not changed. And at this one, yeah, the center fire base is being slowly but surely torn to pieces. And that is also kind of stopping a lot of this other stuff from being built up. So yeah, 400 actually now losing their base. That assault the south side. That did manage to deal all the damage that it was meant to. And that is going to be enough. Pull back all the blitzes, save their base, lose their factory though. Lose a lot of economy, lose some momentum as well. And the main thing, they're losing that forest of lotuses in the center of the map. Not to mention a bit more economy on top of that, but yeah, now that a bunch of the lotuses are gone, a frontal assault is perfectly viable, does the trick, tears it apart, and that firebase is done. Google Frog's commander is the only thing still alive in that section. And even that may not be for long. Of course, having tearing apart the center, now the north side's open. The northeast can take that. Chacha is already sweeping in there just to clean up whatever they can. The south side is pretty securely taken by the northeast team. Although the southwest team, thanks to quite a bit of reclaim, does have a decent economic position. And now we have firewalk. Finally we have firewalkers! All, like, three minutes of badger artillery, and finally a firewalker gets built. I mean, better late than never, it's still gonna be useful against the blitzes. Don't get me wrong, it's... this is always good. I'm surprised it wasn't using as the Lotus Force in the first place. But yeah, between... All the frontline forces blocking the moderators and the moderators themselves. Those blitzes have no easy way in. We aren't seeing anything beyond that, too. No ravagers. Actually, no, not, no reapers. No ogres. Sorry, ogres now. It's ogres. No minotaurs. No ogres. Nothing. Nothing heavy from the tank factory. Granted, Southwest hasn't had much of an economy to make that work, but... Actually, you know what? No, it wouldn't work either. The, the, the entire buildup from Northeast would counter that. Blitzes are kind of the only thing to do, because in large enough numbers, they will get past the moderators. And that explains... Oh, no, the rover assembly is just rebuild by 400, which is also something that makes a lot of sense. But at this point, with all the factories as close as they are, yes, there's some defender's advantage, but that does mean that this entire north assault force will be able to tear them apart at the same time, should they manage to move in. Now... With that being said, there's this one last Blitz Assault. It could deal a lot of damage to everything down here. Bit of a tough call. It might not... No, it's not going to manage to. Actually, we do have a Minotaur. Never mind. We have a Minotaur. We have a perfectly legitimate reason to not use a Minotaur, as Dominatrices are already in play, and making that be a regrettable decision on the face of it, while at the same time, that Northern Assault is coming in, but not managing to find as much value as it would have liked to. Enough Rippers and Darts were already in place to stop that, so it's definitely... A good position. And with the Dominators, he's down as well. The Blitzes are managing to get a fair, fair bit of momentum. They lost a lot of their number, but the Minotaur's still very much alive, and the Blitzes still haven't lost their position. So as it stands, the Southwest team isn't dead yet. They're holding fast quite well, and the Northeast team, they're managing to get some mileage in here, they're managing to get some value, but it's not going to be enough to break them yet. However, that's fine. If the, North, if the Northeast team turns that into Reclaim, gets all this Reclaim over here, how much Reclaim is even in here? Like, I don't even know how much Reclaim is in here offhand. It's... It's got to be plenty, but I just have no idea. I've got to... 2,000 metal. 2,000 metal to reclaim. Right here. Get that 2,000 metal to reclaim. Get the metal extractors out of there. You have map control. You have the center. The center, yeah, there's a caretaker, but nothing else is going to be built there. Like, this entire area has been overrun by the northeast side. So, just get the reclaim. Get the metal extractors. Be, be done. At this point... It is going to be... It's probably still going to be a loss on the part of the Southwest team. But the Northeast team... Really, these Minotaurs being built up, which is exactly what I wanted. So, hey, I get my wish. Minotaurs being built up does turn into Strider-class cost and Strider-class power, really. Now, of course, 
these moderators can make that difficult, but they have a lot of health to work through. 6800 HP with a commander support as well. And the commander- is that commander gonna get taken? No, but one of the Minotaurs very well might. Four Dominatrices will be able to take one of the Minotaurs, turn it around, possibly turn another one as well if it doesn't die first. What with its former ally getting in his way, and Gouvrog's commander going down, not being captured, and with that, that is the storage done for the Southwest team. Anything they happen to have in excess is gone. So with that, it's pretty much over. So that being said, it's... Yeah, it's very likely to be game. I mean, the Dominatrices coming in here can easily take more of these Minotaurs. And Google Frog knows it. Throwing in the towel, that is... At least in Google Frog's part. 400 still in this? No, 400's in this. 400's done too. So that is... That is game. Winner of the tournament, Black Duchy and Kshatriya. Congratulations, you two. Fought hard, got a 6-1 record. Take that, you take that tournament, and also throw some Dominators in as well. And we get to see some tanks at the very end. So we get to see representation from every factory, I think. No, no, no yes, Amphib. Yeah, we saw Amphib. Yep, every single factory was represented in this tournament. That's good. I mean, well done, Aquanim. I really like that you picked maps that allowed for that. I believe, however, we are going to have a second place match. Kingstown and Pyrostasis did win their match, and that puts them in a second place tie with Google Frog and 400. So I believe we're going to be doing a match there as well. That's up to Aquanim, though, so we'll talk to them once this gets sorted, but as far as I know, that is indeed the case. But I'm kind of curious, because that's still... still up in the air, but yeah, like I said, I think Tiebreaker is likely to be fought. Akunum will be able to... Yeah, we'll be able to confirm that. 400 Google Frog versus Kingstad and Pyrostasis will be the last match, Tiebreaker match for second place. That'll be up in... possibly right now, actually, because... They're both done. Hmm. Well, we'll take a short break. Take a short break, rather. And once that's done, we will have the final... Oops. Ah, I don't want to die. We'll have the final match. Second place tiebreaker. That'll be up in a couple minutes, so stay tuned.